Hi friends, welcome back. In the previous chapter of static timing analysis, we studied about important flip flop timing parameters. So, there we discussed about clock to queue delay, setup time, and hold time of a flip flop. In this chapter, we are not going to cover anything new, but whatever we have discussed in our previous chapter, the same thing we are going to discuss in a different field. So, let's get started. So, in digital designs, in synchronous logic designs, there are two main STA problems. The first one is max delay problem. So what is max delay problem? When the data does not have enough time to pass from one register to the next register in one clock cycles. So, for example, when the data is launched by this free flow register 1, the time it takes for the data to propagate from the D input of the register 1 to the D input of the register 2 is more than 1 clock cycle. In ST, we have goal to complete all the timings in 1 clock cycle. So, whenever the delay between launch flow to the capture flow is more than one clock cycle we have a problem and this problem is called max delay problem because ideally as we discussed in our previous chapter the data at the capture flip flop should be stable before the set of timing window that means the data should arrive at the capture flip flop at least before the setup time of the flip flop so if the delay time is more then the data will take more time to come to the capture flip flop and it will cause the setup voidness so this problem is called max delay problem so max delay violations are result of the slow data path and it is often called setup path or setup constraint. So you will see somewhere it is mentioned as setup constraint, and in some places they will mention it as a max delay constraint as well. So don't get confused with both the terms setup delay or max delay constraint. They are both same. So a setup constraint actually specifies how much time is necessary for the data to be available at the input of a sequential device before the clock is that captures that data. Now let's see the second problem in synchronous design which is mean delay. So the mean delay problem occurs when the data path is so short that it passes through several registers during the same clock cycle. So if you see here when the data travels from the launch flow to the capture flow if the delay clock to queue delay plus this combinational logic delay is too short that it is less than the hold time of the second flip flop then there is a chance that the previous data might not have written properly within this register capture register so this is again a problem and this problem is called mean delay problem and this is, this is associated with the whole time of the flip flop so this is also called whole constraint problem so again don't get confused here between the hold constraints and the mean delay constraints they are again both same and sometimes they will they are used as mean delay constraint and sometimes they are used as hold constraints but both are same so a hold constraint specifies how much time is necessary for data to be stable at the input of a sequential device after the clock age that captures the data in the device. So the hold constraint on the mean delay constraints what they say is the data at the input of the flip flop should be stable for some times after the clock age so that the data can be captured properly within the register. Now let's see the, the, the mean delay and max delay constraints in more details in the next slides. So this is the basic slides where we have the launch flow and this is the capture flow. This is a register to register uh, timing path. So this is the age. This is the register one clock. So this clock is named as clock range one and this is clock range two. 
so clock ridge one the rising edge of the clock ridge one this edge is nothing but set up and hold launch edge here the data is launched from the launch flow cliff flow and at the same edge of the clock register two the hold check will be performed and in the next clock edge the setup check will be performed so this is called hold capture edge and this is called setup capture edge the hold is performed at the, at the same clock edge so always remember here the hold is hold check is performed at the same clock edge by default and the setup check is performed at the next clock edge so here if you see this is the launch edge so the data is launched at this clock edge so the data at this clock edge is nothing but the d input which is logic high so the logic high will be at this clock edge this logic high input data will be propagated to the queue and from queue it will reach to the data input pin of the second register so this is clock to queue delay when the rising edge happens the data input propagates from here the d input to the q output so this is called t clock to q delay and after that the data has to be passed to the combinational logic so this is for examples t combinational this after clock to q delay we have the this delay so this is nothing but called t combinational logic delay and this is nothing but the setup window so in the worst case if the combinational logic delay is nothing but equal to this delay total delay so here the setup window will start so this is the next clock edge where the data will be captured by the capture flip flop and here the setup window so in the worst case if the data which is launched by register one which takes that delay and it reaches the point y so this total delay t clock to q delay plus t combinational delay is equal to t minus k t setup of the capture flip flop so this is nothing but condition of a max delay conditions if the delay is more than this delay then the max delay max delay is basically for the total propagation delay clock to q delay plus t combinational delay is greater than the worst case max delay and if the delay is more than this if this rising edge or this low to high transition happening in the setup window then there will be the max delay violation or the setup violation or or the data will be lost the data will not be captured by the capture free flow correctly so let's see how things works here so the after the clock rises it takes t clock to q delay for the data to propagate to the point x which is nothing but this delay then the data goes through the delay of the logic to get to the point y so from x it will it travels to y so this rising at at x the rising edge is happening here so from here to here the next rising edge this is nothing but the delay the propagation delay through the combinational logic the data has to arrive at point y t setup before the next clock edge so the data must arrive at point y before t setup of the before the t setup t setup time before the next clock edge which is happening here so here for the timing path this is a race condition between the data arrival so the data arrival is nothing but the data which will be propagating capture uh, through from uh, launch flip flop to the capture flip flop input pin and the data capture one clock period later data will be basically captured one clock period later so it is a race condition between this arrival time and the capture clock period one clock period later so hope this is clear so here just don't get confused with max delay and setup constraints they both are same now let's see mean delay or hold constraint so in so hold constraints 
by definitions in the previous chapter we stated that after the clock age the data input the synchronous data input should be stable for some time which is called hold window so let's see here the data at the capture flip flop here the data is captured at this clock is the data is captured so once the data is captured here what will happen is the data will be launched by the launch flip flop so the so it will take the clock to q delay and then the combinational logic delay to come to the y point so at this clock age when the data is launched the data will be taking clock to q delay to reach here and then from clock clock to q then from then the combinational delay and it will reach at point y so the, that is happening here and this is for example this is the launch clock age so for the hold mean constraints at the same clock age we also consider the hold check so hold what hold says hold says that the data at input d of the capture flop this flop should be stable at least for t hold time so to, to have this data stable the data which is launched by the launch flop should not reach fast enough or it should not reach before the t hold time of the second flip flop the capture flip flop so if the capture flip flop hold time is this one and the data which takes or the data which is launched from the launch flip flop will take the time which is clock to q delay this one plus after that combinational delay so this is the total time the data will take from the launch flop to the capture flip flop and this is the whole time of the capture flip flop so definitely you can see here that the total delay it's more than the t hold of the flip flop that means during the t hold time the data at input d pin of the flip flop is not changing so this is called the mean delay or hold constraint where in the worst case the data this total propagation delay can be equal to the hold time of the flip flop when the both are same when the at point y the rising is happening at this point and the t hold is also up to this point so this is the minimum propagation delay should be there in order to avoid the hold ways so hope this is clear so the process happens like this the hold problem occurs due to the logic changing before t hold has passed as we discussed this is not a function of a cycle time it is related to a single clock age so the hold time is basically related to a single clock age the hold check is performed at the same clock age at which the data is launched by default so in general the clock rises at the data at x changes after t clock to q the data at y changes after combinational delay and since the data at y has to stay stable for t hold after the clock age for the second register the change at y has to be at least t hold after the clock edge. This is called minima. The change at y or, or, or in other words the minimum delay. The minimum propagation delay when the data is launched by the launch flip flop and it reaches to the input of the capture flip flop should be equal to the t hold time. So the hold time is the amount of time that register once old data must persist at the d input of register to after the clock edge or this path this path should not be so fast that it overrides the previous data immediately so hope the mean and max delay constraints for the problem associated with the mean delay and the max delay is clear here we are going to conclude on this chapter if you have any doubts please write down in the comment sections also if you like this video please hit the like button and please do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you will not get miss the next such video thank you very much